Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm on the Appalachian Trail today at the most photographed point on the entire 2,200 mile Appalachian Trail, and I'm going to bring you a special episode today that shows some amazing, amazing creatures and their ability to withstand all kinds of harsh conditions in this battle for survival. If there's a niche to be occupied, there's something in nature that's going to occupy it. Behind me is the rock at McAfee's Knob. Traditionally, everyone that hikes up here will take a picture up here, but we're going to zoom down and check out something here that's right at my feet. So here on this summit are some puddles. And I looked down into the puddle and took a closer look and found these tadpoles. This is so incredible. These are actually gray tree frog tadpoles. We're at 3,199 feet above sea level. And here are tadpoles surviving in this extreme environment. So today's episode is going to be about gray tree frog tadpoles on this summit rock, why are they here, what are they eating, how are they surviving, why did the parents lay their eggs here. We're going to explore all these things today in today's episode. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's to make this basic. It's like dog Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... So here's the scenario for today's episode on tree frog tadpoles. We're at McAfee's Knob. It's 3,199 feet above sea level near Roanoke, Virginia on the Appalachian Trail. We're standing on Silurian sandstone, which is part of the Tuscarora formation, a geological formation, and it's 450 million years old. These summits like this are here because this sandstone is highly resistant to erosion, while the valleys are made up of less resistant to erosion, mudstones and shales. And so the valleys have eroded away. So this rock has been eroded by wind and water action. And there are some puddles in here. There's some shallow depressions in the rock that filled with rainwater. And right now it's a September 27th. It's late in the year. I'm so surprised to see tadpoles in a tiny place like this so late in the season. So the first question is, why are the tadpoles here? Why did the female frog lay the eggs in this location? Well, this is a tree frog, and it's one of the gray tree frogs species, which I'll talk about later in more detail in my next episode. Gray tree frogs are arboreal species. They live in trees, and they live most of their life in the treetops. And I know this ridge pretty well. I've hiked up here a lot of times. The north side of the ridge falls steeply to the valley floor, probably about 2,000 feet below. And there's certainly no water on that side. On the south side of the ridge, there's a couple springs, but they're kind of intermittent and almost dry up during the summertime. And I know of no ponds anywhere on this four or five mile stretch of the ridge. So where are tree frogs going to lay their eggs? They're going to lay their eggs in puddles. And, and tree frogs, great tree frogs, are notorious for laying eggs in vernal pools, in puddles, in tire tracks in a road, in pool covers, in containers near people's houses. I have a friend who's a herpetologist and he said anywhere, anytime about gray tree frogs and where they're going to lay their, their eggs. So this tree frog must have determined that this was a good place to lay the eggs and she laid her eggs in this puddle. Another factor in a tree frog's decision where to lay eggs may be in part due to the fact that fish are active predators on these eggs. 
And so the tree frog's chance of survival is a lot better in vernal pools and puddles than where fish are present to eat their eggs. So for tree frogs living high on this ridge, this is their only option, is to lay eggs in puddles. So what are these tree frog tadpoles living on here? What do they eat? Tadpoles of frogs are generally herbivores, and they eat algae growing on surfaces. So these guys seem to have plenty of algae to feed on. Here you can see a number of tadpoles seemingly feeding on a dead cricket that fell in here. But I think they're really feeding on things that are growing on this cricket rather than on the cricket itself. Not only do tadpoles go through a physical metamorphosis from their structure when they live in the water to the adults as frogs, but they also go through a metamorphosis in terms of what they eat. So tadpoles are herbivores while the adults are carnivores. What extremes must these tadpoles be able to survive to live here? We're at 3,199 feet here. One of the highest points in this area of the Appalachian Mountains. Temperature extremes are going to be up and down here. During the day, there's no shade, the rock's under full sun, and this water is bound to heat up. At nighttime, the temperature drops very quickly. And at this time of the year, we can also have freezing temperatures. So these guys must be able to tolerate temperatures from 32 degrees, I'm sure well up over 100 degrees at times in, in this water. The temperature is also going to affect the dissolved oxygen concentration. When water is cooler, it can hold more dissolved oxygen. When water heats up, the dissolved oxygen levels go down. So I'm wondering if they're able to gulp some air from the surface. Tadpoles have gills, but they also breathe through their skin and can absorb oxygen through their, their skin. So it's just a remarkable, remarkable ability to survive in such extreme conditions. It is so fascinating. How long will these guys stay as tadpoles? Well, that's a good question. And I would need to come back up here and check these out again. Literature tells us that gray tree frog tadpoles usually go from egg to an adult stage with four legs and they lose their tails in about six to eight weeks. And I can see that in this puddle, some of these guys have already started to develop rear legs. I wonder with the extremes of, of temperature and also maybe tending to the warm side if and, and the conditions here, if these tadpoles might not metamorphosize much more quickly. There's a lot of variability in the time it takes for a tadpole to change into a frog. And it's tied to temperature. It's tied to food availability. So this is really fascinating. I'd love to spend more time studying these guys and seeing how long it takes for them to go from tadpole to frog. So this has been Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door at 3,200 some feet on the summit of McAfee's Knob on the Appalachian Trail in the state of Virginia, coming to you from the most photographed point on the entire 2,200 mile Appalachian Trail. I was excited today, I thought I wasn't working, and I came up and I found those tadpoles in that pond and I thought, wow, that is the most incredible thing tadpoles on the summit of this desolate sandstone rock at 3,200 feet exposed to all kinds of different elements and harsh conditions and yet nature finds a place nature finds a niche to occupy and there's always something that's going to take it and struggle to survive thanks for watching nature at your door if you like what i do please hit your subscribe button and we'll see you for our next episode